looks pretty good. Huh. We're on. We are good. Live. We're good. Welcome. Hello. Welcome to that pedal show live. VCQ, Dan here. Mick here, hello. Happy Monday to everybody. Yes. Especially mm. happy Monday to everyone that came out to uh, Birmingham Guitar Show yesterday. Yes. Uh, it was actually the UK guitar show held in Birmingham. Sorry. At the new Bingley Hall. Um, uh, yeah, we had a blast. So to everyone that we met and we saw and we took selfies with and chatted about gear, thank you for coming out. It was a really great day. Brilliant fun. Yeah, wasn't it? It Brilliant was really cool. Fun. Phil X was after us, which was even better. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> oh, man. Cool. I went, I went and had dinner with Phil last night. Did you? Yes. That's very cool. It was very, very cool. He's just the best. Yeah. Awesome. Good. We're on. Everything's working. Thanks to BV for moderating today. Right. As always, the first uh, little while will be spent answering questions from Friday's video, so we won't be engaging with the live chat uh, until we say we are. But just make sure you check out the thumbnail for the live chat, because we went to great lengths. Originally, that was going to be the thumbnail for the video. Didn't quite work out, but Mick actually... Uh, we poured water over him to get a wet dry thing going. So I just want to bring that to your attention, everyone. And It was totally hilarious. It was awesome. Wasn't it? I mean, it was so funny, you know, because we're comedy geniuses. I was, so well, I was wetting myself. <laughs> get it? <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> okay, so Friday's video was all about um, how to choose two amps for wet dry setups. Uh, regular viewers will know that Dan and I are big fans of wet dry rigs and uh, we've done quite a few videos on wet dry in the past and we talk about it all the time. And the biggest question that comes back is, well, how do you choose the two amps? Yep. So we went through that in some detail. Nice cup there, Dan. You like that cup? Yeah. I, I love this cup. Imagine if you could buy that from the thatpedalshowstore.com. Imagine. Yeah, that would be good, wouldn't it? It'd be great. Yeah. If, you know, just if, for example, they were available from thatpedalshowstore.com. There are important life lessons to be learned from this cup. Yeah. Just... Spend hours looking at this. Yeah. Drinking a nice cup of white tea. We have a t-shirt. We call it Stompio Continua. Um, we have a t-shirt. That still makes me laugh. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, fans of Latin and early printing will find that, that hilarious. hilarious. Um, we have a t-shirt with it on as well. And the only thing that people say is it because it goes reverb rotary, people say rotary. Yes. Yeah. New effect. Anyway, let's get on with the questions. Um, right, we I think we have a new viewer, Stevie Ray. Okay. Not that Stevie Ray. Okay. And Stevie Ray posted quite a few comments last night, a little bit exasperated at our level of detail. Uh, Stevie Ray says... Welcome. Welcome, Stevie Ray. Yeah, Stevie Ray says... It ain't going to get any better. He says, you know, sometimes I think channels like this assume their audience is smart. After years of guitar magazines, I can promise you we don't do that. Oh, uh, but I think it's important to remember not all of us guitar players are gearheads, and I think that's a really important point. Isn't? Yeah. Um, okay. I see most all guitar gear-related channels like yourselves uh, are simply clueless about it, and I think it definitely turns a huge number of potential subscribers off quickly. Um, basically, he's saying, please keep it simple, stupid, for us uh, non-gearheads in future videos. Um, it's really tough. It is very tough. It's a really good point, and thank you, Stevie. Yeah, but the the truth is we're dealing with a vast array of people on different points of their journey, and of course we are on different points of the journey as well, mm. which is frustrating in itself. So we have to pitch it at a level that is true to us, that is you know authentic in terms of what we think and how we do things. Yep. And in a way that's also going to be understandable. Mm -hmm. And we try and do that. All I would say is that there is some extra effort required on the part of viewers if you really want to understand this stuff. Yes. It's not... It's taken us 30 years to get to this point. Yeah. So to start from, like, the very beginning in every video is... A bit tough. It is tough. Would you say? I would. Have you ever thought about being a diplomat? Uh, I have been complimented on my diplomatic skills in the past. It is incredible. 
Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. working on guitar magazines for all those years, this, that's the issue you're faced with every day. Sure. And, I totally and that's not, I, sorry, I don't mean to be facetious. Yeah. Because it's, they're all really valid points. So just, you have a really great way of, of saying that without uh, making anyone feel. Yeah, well, Stevie Ray's got a really good he point. He does have a really good point. Because I feel the same when I go onto um, video editing vlogs. I just changed video editing software. And it is so frustrating. You know, the, the video. Uh, editing manual for the new software I'm using is 1500 pages long and I'm trying to do something really simple sure really simple you know in like how 9 out of 10 video editing programs you just use the cursor keys and go left and right to jump forward a frame and back a frame yes not in this one okay you have to hold down K and it's J and L and okay. nowhere can I find that in the keyboard customization presets until right. you know where to look for it okay so I post a um, Actually, I didn't post. I searched the posts on the Black Magic forum, mm -hmm. going, "How do I do this?" Nope. And about the first eight answers are, "Read the manual, moron." <laughs> okay. So I feel your pain, Stevie yeah, Ray, yeah. because when you come in and you don't know this stuff, it can be alienating. However, um, that's where you got to put a bit of work in, do a bit of research. So I spent my weekend reading the manual, researching forums trying to understand things that I don't understand, and that's how you get knowledge. It's like walking into a jazz gig and going, hang on, guys, just, yeah. whoa. Yeah. What do, What are you playing? Yeah. And what are you playing? Can we just... Look, just just play A. Yeah, major scale. The, yeah. Next chord, D, maybe. <laughs> anyway, point taken, Stevie Ray, and thanks for all the comments. We really appreciate it. Uh, Anthony Dratnell. I seem to end up playing wet moist rather than wet dry. <laughs> as I prefer... <laughs> well, that's what Dan and I were doing on Sunday. As I prefer uh, most of my modulation pre-overdrive. Do I need separate overdrives for each amp? If I want to split my modulation with overdrive after, or is there a more clever way to do this? No, absolutely. Look, um, modulation before the overdrive, if that's the sound you're going for, Awesome. Yeah, and run it wet, wet. Run it to both amps, no worries. And then you can run your reverbs and your delays dry. Awesome. Uh, wet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that works great. Yeah, but you can. I mean, there's no, there's nothing stopping you setting up two different effects paths with different overdrives into the different amps if you want. I mean, you can, you can take it as far as you as you want to take it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yes, you're certainly not alone in in preferring your some of your modulations before overdrive. Um. Right, so the majority of the rest of this, these questions is going to be on latency and digital. Ah. Because far and away, there were two themes. One is, um, and in fact, let's deal with that one first because it's easy. Okay. Theme number one was, what if I've got an old-fashioned uh, two-channel amp, so like a deluxe reverb or an AC30 or a Marshall Plexi, you know, something that has two channels that are completely separate. Can I run wet dry into those two channels? And that was asked by Tony Pierce, among many, many others. So he has a an AC15. If he uses a humdinger on his board, can he then run into the two channels of the AC15? The uh, like on the new one, it's called a top boost, and the normal channel, mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. um, and run wet dry that way. You, you absolutely you can. What and what happens is. So let's say that each, um, so it depends on the amplifier, right? So for example, the uh, my AC30, you can have both channels going all the time. Some channel switching amplifiers, you can't do that, right? Um, my matchless I can, but the matchless that I, the matchless I got with reverb couldn't because the reverb had to be in one channel or the other, right? right? So it all depends on the amplifier, but the, the, I do it with the. Actually, we did a show on this. Remember, I split the, um, I split the signal. One side went into one channel of the Vox. One side went to the tape machine, and that went to the other side of the Vox. So I ha had a volume control for the tape machine, and a volume mm. control for the direct sound. So you can. It's it's um, the cool thing about that is you're using. Well, like for me personally, I was using a different valve for each side of that, mm. like a different preamp valve. 
it is still mixing together in the amplifier, but it's a it is a cool thing to do. It's, yeah. It does it does work. It's, it doesn't give you the separation, but it's you know it can work well. It's you're basically just mixing two signal paths in parallel then, rather than them in, in being in series, and then you can affect that wet dry mix into the different channels of the amps. Yeah, and again, exactly. Uh, Dan may have said this, but you need to just make sure that those two channels are in phase. Obviously, like any two amps, and, and in true spirit of doing everything in reverse, the third theme was panning. Right. So if you do that, you're probably taking a step towards our next topic of conversation, which is panning. Two two aspects thereof. Uh, let me just get this, get some names going. Uh, Gary Mosley. Hi, Gary. I've met Gary a few times uh, at gigs and things. Saw him at the Matt Schofield gig. Oh, cool. Um, Gary's saying, the wet-dry mix... Uh, is difficult to crystallise. I'm listening on in-ear headphones. I'm expecting to take one ear out and hear the affected signal uh, uh, and listen to the other ear and hear the dry signal. Um, I'm not hearing this. I'm hearing effect in both ears. Mm -hmm. It sounds fantastic. Uh, and I can tell when you use wet-dry videos, it does sound bigger. But it, is it the general mix that I'm hearing with the room mics? It would be interesting to hear as a genuine left-right um, wet-dry mix as that's how the amps actually sound in the room. Somebody else says... No, it's not. I know, I know, we're gonna, we'll come to it. Caleb Tallby says, would these configurations have separate outputs to front of house or could they be summed to mono and is that worth the effort? So let me just check, that's the last of the panning questions, I believe it is. Cosmic J and Lewis Orton both are having the same question. Basically, okay. what's going on? You've got wet dry, but I can hear effect in both ears. Yes. Okay. It's not about a, a left, right. It's not stereo. No, it's not stereo. Most of the time, uh, so we were at the show yesterday and Mick said to the sound guy, all the amps straight down the front. And that's, so what happens is the sound guy then has control over the level of the wet amp and the level of the dry amplifier, but they're still going straight down the front. I did say please. You did say, I'm sorry, yeah, you did yeah. say please. And he was a lovely sound guy too. Big thought, thanks to Les. Yes. Yeah, Known Les for nearly 20 years He now. did a great job. Yeah, yeah. He did a really great job. He's, he's. Yeah, yeah. Um, I could tell by the. Yeah, yeah. The, Les, Les, Les is, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yes, yeah, so it's not about left and right. There are, you know, some people will actually have their wet dry amplifiers sat on top of each other and have it, you know. Yeah. Um, it's about having the attack and clarity of the dry amplifier with the control of the wet, uh, wet effects in the other amplifier. Um, like, so we're in, in this room, the wet dry amplifiers are really close together. If you stand anything more than a metre away, there's, you're not going to hear it, a left and right. I've got a vlog like coming out in the next couple of days which uses these two amps wet dry oh. with that pedal board I put together for the for the thing. Okay. And as Dan was saying, you would, it, it, let's say you've got, um, this is dry, right? And this is wet, and you've got harmonic trim coming out of that amp only. You would swear blind stood here I mean, clearly, when you stood here, you're not hearing it left, right. You're just hearing it, right? Because yep. that's how that works. You would swear blind the harmonic trem is coming out of the Marshall as well. Yeah. And we've, yeah. we've when we get people in and we go, listen to this, you ever heard wet dry before? And they're like, and it just takes them a minute and they look at it going, and then you have to physically turn one amp off for them to believe it. Yeah. yeah so yeah. maybe that's what we should have done in the video. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but that's, you said, didn't you, it's not stereo. It's not stereo. No, and it's, it's not, not a left-right thing. Even no. Because clearly if your, your brain and your hearing and your decoding is so complex, when you're stood in any space, you're hearing stereo, right? Because you've got <laughs> left and right, but you're not just hearing stereo, you're no. hearing spatial. Yeah. You're hearing front, back, up, down, left, right. You're hearing all of that. When you put headphones in, it does get weird because you can pan stuff left and right, mm. and that is a an extreme weirdness of stereo. Yeah, if you're doing a stereo effects, I mean, it can be it can be tricky because you don't have that isolation. But if if there's a bit of separation, that's all it needs for yeah. that. And you know, the wet dry thing, uh, 
you can have them, you know, mono straight down the center, you'll get the same effect. Yeah. You know. Um, and it might be that once that hits a PA system, the effect is slightly differently. It's different because you then are getting both things out of one one speaker, mm. as it were, the, the PA speaker stack. And at that point, it's the sound person's problem to decide whether they want it wetter or drier. That sort of brings us right back to the beginning. You know, stereo absolutely requires left and right. Mm -hmm. Wet, dry requires wet. That's where you start. That's where it's all happening. And let's just add a bit of dry to make it poke out a bit more. Yep. Isn't it? It's not... Beautiful. No, absolutely. They're not... They're not... Uh, and the other thing with stereo is you have to have both uh, left and right to get, a, to get a complete picture, a complete sound picture. Yeah. Because there are, there are diff there's different information. Otherwise, all you can hear is Ringo. Exactly, exactly, but with the the wet dry thing, it is just uh, you know, this, you, you're already getting the same gain information to both, but one has the extra wet effects, and then you can blend those together. But yeah, yeah, um, yes. Uh, anyone just joining us, uh, please be aware that we're answering questions from the actual video on Friday before we get into the live thing. So um, just please be aware that we're not really looking at the live thing just yet. Thanks to BV for moderating today. Yes. And Catherine, if you can do the slow thing, that would be awesome. Thank you. <laughs> um, so the main, the main subject right across the comments section, apart from, oh my God, that sounds amazing. Didn't, never knew you could put a Marshall class five with a high watt and it sounds awesome. Oh, yes, man. you can. It's so good. Was a lot of confusion around digital latency. And I think a lot of people feeling a bit glum that they've gone out and bought a katana or a pedal that doesn't have analog dry through and all of a sudden we're telling you you can't run wet dry with a valve amp because you have a latency issue and therefore a phase issue. Mm. So let's get into some of that. Um, Anthony or Anthony Dratnall. No, Jim Selwood. Jim Selwood says. Um, My cousins are Selwoods. Really? Yeah, sorry. Did they? I've never even thought of that. That's got to be where that yeah, comes from, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Thatcher. Yeah. Uh, there's yeah. some other ones I... Yeah, yeah, say. yeah. Yes, but yes. Yeah. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> um, with reference to latency and wet-dry, I run a wet-dry rig. That's quite hard to say, that. Wet-dry rig. It's a bit like a little yellow lorry, isn't it? Yes. Um, with a digital delay, uh, an Electro Harmonix Canyon in the wet amp, I'm pretty sure it isn't analog dry through. If I were to turn up the mix on this pedal, so it's only the delayed signal going through, would this minimise the phase issues because the dry signal is only through the dry amp? It would completely solve those phase issues because you don't have, uh, a, there's no link between the direct sound. Yeah. So if, yeah, 100% wet, and that's only going to one amplifier? Yeah. Solved. Yeah, and then you're basically, what are you doing there? You're adding parallel effects to your dry sound, which is how you would do it in a yeah, studio exactly. environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I, I, I don't know, but I'm assuming that's the way that there was a phase where effects loops in amps were pretty bad and you couldn't get the, you couldn't get this lovely sort of clarity and audio quality of really nice sounding delays and reverbs. So guys like Robin Ford, Larry Carton would use a full range stereo system just for their wet effects. Right. And I'm assuming that was probably 100% wet, was it? Yeah. Otherwise... Mixed the, in with the... Yeah. They just mixed that on top of what's going on with the Yeah, so you're essentially taking a studio situation and making it alive. Yeah, and that, it, like, loads of guys do it now, especially if they're using uh, a, a wet, dry, wet rig. Right? Uh, like Devin Townsend. Like Devin Townsend's a really good example. Um... So he has his amplifier, and there's a signal that goes out the amplifier, but then... Oh, okay, very good. It'll break one day. Um, so many people will rejoice. Will rejoice, yeah. yeah. Okay, so what do we say? Robin Ford, Larry Carton, Debbie, Devin Townsend. Who else have we talked about? Phil X. Phil X. Uh, if you're not aware, Phil X is on tour in the UK at the moment. He's going to be in Bristol on Wednesday night. Dan and I will be there. Come to Bristol. I can't wait. Be rocked to your very core. There is no one rocks like Phil X. If you've never seen Phil X, you, you deserve to see Phil X. He is a rock god. 
Plank. And he sings like a really good version of Robert Plank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like a like a seventies rock plant. He's like, ah! yeah, yeah, man. And he's totally authentic. He is brilliant. Just yeah, love him to bits. Yeah. So Wednesday night in Bristol, and please check Phil X's website for his tour dates in the UK this week. Yeah. So to to carry <clears throat> on, like Devon will have his his main amplifier, and that gets all of his dry stuff, and then the wet effects of this uh, stereo axe effects, and that's getting all the, the game stuff plus the stereo things and that's going to a PA system so it's this full range thing and that's where all the stereo effects are coming from but he's still core tone is his valve amp right yeah. in the centre yeah and if the dry tone was going through that that's where you get the problem yeah exactly <laughs> to wit to woo John W says when you speak of latency in regards to the katana do you mean the same kind of latency that I've heard spoken about uh, the axe effects by Steve Vai uh, is the attack quicker with the valve amp? Thanks, love the show, guys. Thank you, thank you, John. Um, the vast majority of people will not notice the latency of a digital pedal. Mm -hmm. It's so quick. Uh, I'm trying to remember how because I just for the halibut. I had a look at the two waveforms just to see how much the latency was, and I don't know how much it was in milliseconds, but it was kind of minute. Right. I mean, it was by no means half a half a cycle. It was probably a third to a quarter of a cycle. What do you know? What frequency that was, though? The cycle was. In terms of the frequency of the guitar. Yeah. Uh, it was just the biggest one I could see, so it would have been a fairly bass frequency. I would okay. have thought. Okay. So that and, and so and I'll. I'll could do a quick demo of that. Okay, but that's where all the issues come. So in. You, you 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 probably won't notice it if you just if you've got a hundred percent digitally processed signal, whether that is via something like the Axe FX, and yes, it is the same thing by the way, um, the Katana, or indeed a, a pedal which doesn't have analog dry through. You you'd struggle to notice it. Where you know by its own. Where you notice yeah. it is if you've been playing valve amps really loud for twenty five years, and you've got that instant connection and flow of harmonic content through you, through the guitar, through the strings, through the speakers. And then the way I noticed it was when I first got a Line 6 M5. Right. And I put it in my pedal board. I was like, man, this, this isn't right. And I couldn't work it out. It sounded perfectly good. The modulations were good. Everything was good about it. But I just could not gel with playing. Right. So I took it off because I didn't understand. I just thought, oh, maybe I'm not setting it up right or... Or whatever, and all these years later, I've kind of realised exactly what it was, right. and it was that digital latency. So yes, it is, and of course the latency in that product would have been considerably more than in the latest generation of really, of really great sharp processors and all that kind of stuff. I remember plugging into a, a Line Six Spider for the first time, going, "Yeah, it's like no." Nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is you know in guitar. That's a long time ago, so it's very different now. Everything is relatively new in electric guitar terms, but that's you know really new <laughs> technology, isn't it? Yeah, you, of course. I don't know. I started work on guitarist in 1996, and the Line Six Axis 212 had just come out. Oh wow! So it was only 20 years ago, really. Yeah. Wow. Hang on, 24 years ago. It's not that long, is it? No. But yes, John, it is the same. Uh, Jim Kilgore, Jim Kilgore. I have a wet dry setup converted from stereo after watching your first show on it. I love it, but found one small issue. I have an avalanche run for delay and reverb. I think avalanche run is Earthquaker. Earthquaker. Yep, We've Earthquaker. got one coming in actually. Do we? Ah, oh, yes. When recording, I notice the wet signal is delayed slightly from the dry signal. It sounds fine live in the room, but on playback, I hear a slight comb filtering effect. Oh, gonna get into that. Awesome. Uh, from the phase issue, I have a humdinger and have adjusted the phase. Mm -hmm. We demonstrated this in the video. Um, the avalanche run processing seems to create a very small delay and therefore phase issue. Do you have similar issues recording the rigs on the show and how do you deal with it? Would an analog dry through signal solve this? Yes. Yes, it would. 100%. And the reason we don't have an issue with recording is because we don't use anything that doesn't have uh, an analog dry through when we're going wet dry. If we're going just into two amps, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Because the whole thing is delayed. Yep. So you, you don't notice that comb filtering 
thing that you're talking about. But wet dry, you know, for years Dan and I have been going, we don't like digital amps and we don't like effects that have no analog dry through for this very reason because they're unusable with straight analog gear. Another question on that in a minute. So Dan. Okay, time for the puppet show. Right. This is a really basic... Uh, okay. Looks like the sea. It does look like the sea. Right, let's go closer. Right. Okay, let's go closer. Okay. I'll tell you how close to go. All right. Come closer. Keep coming. Yeah. Keep coming. Right, now tilt down and go up a bit. There you go. Okay. I love right. that. Tilt so, down a bit more. Tilt forwards a bit more. Catching the reflection of the light, see? Okay. All right. So you're going to give me a hand, okay? There you go. Right, okay. So here I have some different frequencies. <laughs> okay. Right, so. What frequencies are these, Dan? So let's say, let's say, for example, this is. A220, all right, which will probably be the A the most of you know. A440 is A above uh, middle C. And let's say, so here is our waveform for A. And this is this is really basic stuff. The guitar uh, with the harmonics is so much more complex than anything that you'll see here. But in basic terms, here is A440, uh, A, A220, right? Above this, I've got A440, and you can see that it, the frequency... You got that? Yeah, got it. You can see that it happens twice as fast as the frequency in A220, right? And that, that gives us an octave. So, A440, where did you say A440 so is? A440 would be, uh, would be, I think there. Yeah? Yeah, but maybe there. One of these is A440, I think it's that one. Okay, then that's A220. Yeah, so open string should be A220. Yeah. Right, exactly. So by, when you double the frequency, you basically go up an octave, okay? Same thing with your, okay, right. So, and here we've got a couple of other frequencies in between, okay? So I've got, uh, I've got a, I've got a, a C in here. I went to to just do a like a a, a minor chord that got completely um, bamboozled with the whole thing because my drawing is as you can see like a three year old child who has no talent for drawing. I think we might need to go back to the mics because the mics are pretty quiet. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, I'm guessing. Okay. All right. So there's there's that. Okay. So what happens? If I've got one amp on this side playing that A and the amp on this side, when they are in phase, the frequencies match up like this. Ish, okay? you have to imagine that they're matching up. I watched uh, Autumn Watch just recently and they had graphics that were as bad as this. Right. Did they? Yeah. I, I, I'm going to do some proper graphics for this, but I thought I'd just write it yeah, out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, so, okay. If I flip the polarity of the phase, right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn it upside down, and you will see that, that the A220 frequency. Remember that these sheets of paper are your two amps. Yes, so these, the, the A220 frequency is exactly out of phase. The, that C1 that there is also, Oh, it's really hazardous it's like this. That is also exactly out of phase. If I keep going up there, that one there is also exactly out of phase. So basically... I see, so it's frequency dependent. Completely frequency dependent. Phases, right? So, yeah, right, so, right, right, right. So, so, but if I've, but look, like all the harmonics and everything, if, if I, so the polarity is they're either in phase or they're not, yeah. right? Now, here's what happens though. Now watch carefully. I am now going to delay this one, the top one, is my wet signal. Yeah. Right? I'm now going to delay that by a couple of milliseconds. Now, have a look what's happened to the bass frequencies. Yeah, yeah, right. Right? Now, they are, they're not adding like they were before, but they're still adding. This frequency here is now completely removed. This frequency here is adding a little bit. So some frequencies will add, 
and some frequencies that is fascinating will, will take away. Now, what happens when you get some frequencies that add and some frequencies that subtract? You get a comb, comb filter. filter. I did not know that. Right. So that's what's happening. So the only way, the only way that you can take that delayed sound and get it back in phase is to then delay the bottom one to put that back in phase. Which I think takes us to our next question. Actually, Gregory Anderson says, you guys should explain the difference. Uh, Gregory Anderson says, you should explain the difference between being out of phase because one of the signals is inverted. Yes. What you just talked the, about. Yeah, the, the inverted polarity of the phase, yeah. And something being out of phase because one is delayed. So yes. Dan, you just answered that. Um, they are different beasts. They are different beasts. When the signal is inverted, all frequencies are affected, says yep. Gregory. Exactly what we just, blah, 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 blah. Comb filter. Boom. So thank you, Gregory, for that. You are absolutely right, obviously. Yes. Um, so if you're trying to fix the phase problem with digital analog wet dry, you could do it if you delayed the analog amp the same amount as the digital amp's latency. Yes. We did talk about that in the video. We did. But you could never get it in phase by delaying the digital amp. You would just change the frequencies of the comb filter. Yes, correct. Which I believe leads us to our final question, or indeed nearly our final question, which was about that. Da 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 da. Yes, James Hodgson. When combining valve and digital amps, is there any way to add latency to the valve amp in a live amp context to avoid the phasing issue? Would this be unbearable? There, okay, there is. So, uh, that to me is like saying, could you stick a bucket on the front of your I know, Ferrari I know, I know. so that it does a tractor's job? There are times when it is essential. So, uh, a quick example uh, Biffy Clyro, they have. Uh, 100 watt Marshall and uh, th 100 watt Fender heads going to two ISO cabs, and that is the majority of the sound for the gig, right? All the time, all cranked, everything's going into them. Ah, awesome. But for certain songs, they have certain sounds in the album that they wanted to capture, get as really close as they can. So they have campers in the rack for that. Yeah. And on those sounds, the sound guy has had to delay the Fender and the Marshall, and and find that point... To solve that to, problem. To solve that problem. Yeah. Now, they've killed that. They're not using campers anymore. They've got rid of the campers, yeah. Everything's 100%. Just too much hassle. Just, yeah. And yeah, it's, yeah. Not, Mixing the two is too much hassle. Yeah. So, and that, now... The, the, but it was, it was amazing because they could... It was like, there's something wrong here. They kept... And they kept messing with the delay times for the camper. Something wrong, something wrong. Ah. Mm. And everything sounded great. Have you any idea how long that delay might be? Is it less than one millisecond? No, I don't think it's less than one millisecond. I think it's like a couple of milliseconds. So if you had... Um, but I don't know. I don't know for sure. There, are, can... there are delay pedals that exist that will go to one millisecond. Yeah. Two, two milliseconds. The, the chrono delay, for example. Yeah, from uh, Providence. From Providence is a really know. good one. I don't know if the Boss DD200 goes that low. Probably doesn't. Don't know, don't know, don't know. But there are delay pedals available where you can go to single digit milliseconds and it might be. Your problem is, is if it's. I've not, got a chrono delay here. Not a whole millisecond. I've got a chrono delay here and we can, I can, we can do it. Yeah, yeah. Get a, get a. So you'll be able to see the, in the tech spec, they'll tell you the latency and in, should tell you the latency in milliseconds. And we'll be able to set the dry through side. Yeah. With that, and yeah. you'll hear it all go bing, and all the frequencies sort of jump back in phase. Yeah. So it's definitely fixable. It's one of those things that is fixable, but. But. And if you need to fix it because those are your two amps and that's where you are in the world, then it is fixable. If you're thinking about getting into this, then I'd think very strongly about either not having digital analog together, uh, either, you know, having two of the same digital amps, because of course each digital thing is going to be slightly different. Yep. Or two analog amps. Yeah. Yeah. So it is fixable. Like all things, it's fixable. Yeah. Um, right. The second question that James had was, how should a looper pedal be incorporated into a wet dry signal chain? So it depends if you want the looper pedal to go through both amps or through one amplifier. You So you can put it wherever you like. You can put it at the... If you want the loop to be affected by everything, put it at the start. If you want the loop 
um, not to be affected by the uh, you want, if you want to record the gain sounds but not affected by the um, uh, but if you want to record the gain sounds and have those gain sounds from the looper be affected by the wet sounds then you put it just before the split if you want to just uh, which I I have my um, what's the tape delay pedal that I use lo-fi loop junkie no 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 uh, uh, the counter five no not that one no, the other one it's it's red panda red panda tensor tensor and I just I have <clears> that at the end of my chain on the on the wet side of the amp and I will use that to create some sounds to play over but it's only ever going through the wet amplifier yeah. and it's and it's a, got a great true bypass in it um, so you know, I can turn it off. Yeah. And then if I want it, it's just in the wet amplifier. I, yeah. And do I, the same thing with loopers, it's fine. I would personally put it on the end of my wet yeah, channel exactly, signal chain. Yep, yeah, exactly what I what Because I, what I do. The, the way I think both of us probably view wet dry is everything goes to the wet amp. Yeah. That's the sound. So if, if the sound engineer's having an off day, hates you, only gives you one mic, you're not you're not stuffed. Yeah. Everything is fine because it's all going through the wet amp. The dry amp is there as a kind of, you know, a, a, a solidifying, punching it addition. Yep, it reinforces everything and it keeps your, it keeps those transients and it keeps your attack of the note yep. forward. Uh, but, you, you know, you can not have it there and just turn the effect level down and you'll be fine. Um, but yeah, having that, well, it's always. That's why I always say have your dry amplifier on the isolated output as well, because if you don't have it there, you still need your yes. earth through on your wet amplifier. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, right. Last question then on this uh, before we go to the live chat. David Werewell. David Werewell. Werewell. We will. We will. We will. Werewell. Werewell. David Werewell. Apologies, David. No doubt you'll put us right. Any thoughts on whether differing speaker cabinets make wet dry difficult? Oh, blimey, oh, well. Sorry, new glasses wearer. I know I'm driving everyone mad. I've managed to end up with a Hot Rod Deluxe 1x12 and a JTM 45 with a 4x12. Nice tie. Very good. Given I only play at home, <laughs> the 412 is excessive. Depends Brilliant. what kind of home you've got, doesn't exactly. it, really? Um, you've got to own one at some point though. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And I'm predicting a comeback in 412s, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a passive little attenuator on the JTM45, but frankly, however I try, it's massively overpowering. Um, all right. So two questions there. Is a JTM45 and a 412 overkill for home? Probably. I think we proved in the video that you can do it with a tiny... We had a 0.1 watt Bugera and a class five running together and it sounded glorious. You still hit 100 dB though. Yeah, we did. So that rather proves the point. But um, does different cabinets make a difference? I would imagine there are all kinds of phasing issues with different cabinets and speaker sizes and, but that's part of the magic. Yeah, uh, not, in, not in the way of delaying all those. No, it's not a delay. Though. It's not a delay. It's just but you have, yeah, you have different, you have different frequencies in one, and do, like we did with the the you know the gain in your amplifier, and it's all part of it. Yeah, it's all part of it. But yeah. you, but you're not going to run into latency issues by no. having a different cab. And no, and we 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 I think we proved it, didn't we? We we said what if there were wildly differing differing amps? Yeah, exactly. So we had a class five and a hundred watt high watt. The class five's got a one by ten tiny cabinet, and the high watt was running through the giant two rock two twelve, and it was well glorious. Phil X does that. He has his his Philax uh, signature Friedman, and he has a Greer, right? Sat on top of that, and the, and he said it's really funny. He says you know, he loves that sound. He says whenever he gets a sound guy, he says, okay, so this is the Marshall. It plays it. Oh, this is the Friedman. Sorry, uh, okay, the sound guy. That sounds amazing. And then put the Greer, and it's like, well, of course, compared to a thumping four by twelve. You know, it's little one by ten or one by eight, even one of tiny little lamp. Sanger goes, "Okay, what do you want me to do with that?" So stick them on together, and suddenly, oh, wow. uh, yep, and it's unreal. Huh? It's unreal. Just something complimentary in the way they combine. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the live chat then. Uh, thank you for waiting, everyone that's been yes. waiting and posting comments. Um, 
not quite sure quite where we're going to start, so we're just going to start down towards the end, I think. Um, let's start here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Everyone's just having a nice chat with... Uh, nice chat Sorry. With, uh, the Holy Moly says A440, is A at the fifth fret on the top string? Oh, that's really interesting. A at the fifth fret on the top string? Do you mean on the thin E string? If I had my... Oh, yes. So that's where it would be. So... Here. Right. So then that's A220. So, uh, there. <laughs> I was joking. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> and then that is, so that is A, A110. A110 then. Yeah, so that was... What's that? That's that a was... song. Actually, it's probably an arpeggio, a uh, uh, delay thing created with a yeah, synth, right. didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Only you. The chords change. Yeah. That's the, yeah, yeah. Very good. Yeah, yeah. By the Flying Pickets and Alison Moyer and probably other people. Um, anyway, I saw her live once. She was awesome. Oh, she's a she's a hell of a singer. Man alive. Yeah, yeah. Can't. Uh, um, Michael Brander says Dan and Mick both holding a piece of paper to get it right for the camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, right. An A419 is a road near Swindon which has its own frequency of delays. So I know it very well. Good on you, good on you, Robert. Um, Dan, you keep picking that guitar up. What is Sorry. it? This is uh, the new Grey Guitars Skipper. It's a an off city type thing. It has convinced and me to buy a mastery bridge for my jazz master. Yeah, it's so good. That thing is unbelievable. Yeah. But look I the finish on it. It's I nice. Know, it's so good. Thin. Oh, yeah, look at this. Oh, you see, see the wood? Yeah. See the wood do that? See, so, yes, I picked it's this up from Grain on that. yesterday. Yeah, yeah. And I haven't put it down. I, I went to bed about one o'clock in the morning after playing this and then got up at about half past six and continued to play and play this chord. <laughs> I can do this. And I'd forgotten about this because it's been so long since I played a guitar with a. Uh, you know, like a springs in the tremolo, but if you listen to this, yeah, it's all full it of adds springs, reverb. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, 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 yeah. Love it. So De good. Dev says, I run my rig dry uh, to the front of a Mesa, wet from the whammy on the loop of the Mesa to two digital amps. Is that considered wet dry? That's probably wet dry wet. But if you're not running the wet effects 100% wet, you will get latency and phase issues. Yeah. And if you're coming out of the whammy, uh, it, it might be enough latency that it'd be a delay to both the amplifiers to be fine. Wouldn't matter, yeah. Jeffrey Ramirez, how do you boost on a wet dry? Wouldn't it boost just one amp or do you use identical boost on each end of the pedal chains? Uh... It depends where you put the boost. So boost before the just before the split. Yeah, put the boost just before the split. Therefore, it's on the end of all the overdrive sections, uh, and so it'll boost both amps. So think about the the effects that you're going to put through the wet things. Most of those effects have a lot more headroom than you know your standard overdrive pedals. So they can they'll work great with the boost. Um, yeah. So just put the boost just before the split. Yeah. Bob's your uncle. If you use the boost in the loop like a lot of people do with gainy amps, then yeah, you're into a whole different thing there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just yet another reason why we do things the way we do. Uh, Matthew Fairchild tells us where A440 is. Thank you. Um, maybe a boost before the split so both amps get boosted, says Bryson Cook. Yeah, bang on Bryson. Um, da -la 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 -la. Uh, Nimrodian says, did they have their dinner yet? Dan looks hungry. I haven't. No, I'm on my fast day today. Are you? So I haven't it's eaten. It's 6 p.m. It's not quite dinner time yet. Yes, yeah, so I could break my fast now. I'll be fine. Nice. Uh, Ian Martin, um, great show in Birmingham yesterday, says Ian. Oh, cheers. Thank Thanks you, Thanks for Ian. coming out. Yeah, Ian. thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mick, did you buy that guitar? Uh, not exactly. <laughs> no. Uh, for anyone not aware, I was... Um, the very nice people at ATB Guitars, where Dan and I went and did a video a few months back, um, uh, lent me a 66 transition Strat, all original Lake Placid Blue that had gone lovely in green because the nitro goes 
Anyway, it's very nice. Daffid and Mike. Yeah, Daffid and Mike, yeah. Lovely guys. Splendid Incredible humans. guitars and, yeah, just wonderful. Uh, Keflim66 says, Hey, guys, uh, from Fort Myers, Florida. Hello, Florida. Blimey. Um, I set up my rig in a wet dry this weekend, never going back again. Yep. Yep, that's what happens. Yep, it does rather have that effect. Um... Six months time, you'll start a YouTube channel and tell everyone all about it for years to come. <laughs> Perka is totally calling us out, Dan, and I knew this would happen at okay. some point. Right, come on, Perka. What pickups did you get for Dan's daughter's telly? I oh, promised we'd get some pickups yes. for Liv's uh, telly for Christmas, and we never did. Yeah, so, she's um, in there playing that guitar nearly every she? day. Okay, so yeah. she doesn't care. Suffering from poor tone, but she soldiers on because <laughs> that's the sort of girl she is. Bless her. <laughs> so thank you for the. Uh, the reminder, Perka, we definitely need to get live some te- uh, new pickups. Yes. Um, uh, Greg Mowry. Greg Mowry. Um, greetings from the USA. Greg here. Hello. Uh, nice. Uh, I use a wet dry amp setup and I would love to try to get a third dry amp in the mix. Love your show. Um, cool. Yeah, I mean, why not? Yeah, you can go nuts on that stuff. Yeah, it's brilliant. Just. just Draw it out, draw a diagram out where you want the splits, what you want happening in which amps. That's what I think a lot of people are very confused by wet dry. It's like just pen, paper, signal path. Put it things is. where you want them mm-hmm. and then it becomes much less confusing. There's a great app called Graphio that I use all the time to do any sort of signal path stuff. Mm. Just lay it out. and Because when you can see it, you can understand it. Yeah, trying yeah, to yeah. trying to explain stuff like this, and then you've got to keep those images in your head as we go through, is really tricky. But if you can see it, which is why I did my brilliant drawings of the ocean to try yes, and you know. Yes, yes. Um, Art Floresca, Art Floresca says I've been experimenting with wet dry for the last five years. I have best results when running effects 100% wet. Yeah, why not? Um, that might be because you have no analog dry through on some of those effects. Because it might sound a bit weird yeah, if yeah, you've yeah. got the dry signal they, in. Yeah, absolutely. It might not. So I'm going to do it at the weekend. Yes, you can. Um, I, it would sound pretty cool. Mm-hmm. It would sound pretty cool. There is something that happens when the two things are physically separate. And I don't know what that is. So obviously in a 412 stereo cab, all four speakers are in one box. So it would still be cool and you can still affect your wet-dry... Yeah, it will still be very cool. It'll still be very cool. Having having got the speakers in the same cabinet does make a difference. But but it's still a really yeah, cool thing it's to still, do. It's still yeah, being an absolutely. amazing sound. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Clan Richardson, uh, sorry, Cian, and that's probably pronounced some other way. Cian, C I A N Richardson. Hey guys, looking to buy my first electric guitar. Wondering if you have any suggestions for anything that would be good. Um, I would buy a Squire Strat or a Squire Tele personally. Yeah, they're great. Or um, one of the junior style Epiphone Les Paul type things. Or if you've got the budget, go and buy uh, an R9 <laughs> uh, Les Paul and yeah. a lovely custom shop Strat and Telly. Just, you know. Yeah, but it, depends, if, it depends what your budget is, really. I think Fender and Epiphone are so h- hitting it out of the park with quality and yeah, consistency yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and cool factor and, you know, there's classic, but there's tons of great guitar brands out there there Yamaha is. is always 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 provides great value for money um, if you're into the heavier side of things check out Chapman Guitars um, do some good stuff mm. who else uh, oh man there's so many great buy the guitar that you want to look at ooh I like it and that'll make you pick it up and play it'll it you pick it up and play it that's really good yeah you got to feel good about it yeah. yeah three rules of buying a guitar what it looks like what it looks like. Yeah, it looks like. <laughs> Seriously, though, that sounds really good. It sounds really facetious, but it's true. You got to look at that thing. You got to do yeah. what we all did when yep. we were kids, and you go to bed at night and you stick it, yep. lean it against the wardrobe or wherever you've got it, because you, you haven't got a guitar stand at that point. You know. Well, the first thing you do is you see the ad for it in the in, in the magazine. Yeah. You cut that page out and you put it on the wall, and you yeah. just you know. So you go and do your summer job, and then you come. You know, I remember doing that. Yeah. And then going down to, uh, it was <sighs> Brisbane, there's the mall, and there was this massive music store, and you'd go downstairs. That's the first time I ever saw a Charvel, and it was and it was in the glass case. And I was looking going, oh, you know, it was amazing. And then they had the Striker by Crane, the yeah, Crane yeah, yeah. and the Striker, and I thought, well, I can afford, you know, single pickup, yeah. 
uh, Floyd Rose. I can, you know, if I work my butt off, you know, so I put down, we had lay-by then. Yeah, yeah. So I had 10% deposit and you yeah. had six months to pay it off. Went and worked my butt off and came back. Remember the day I came back? And uh, I had enough for a really, had saved up enough for that and a really cheap case as well. Magic. But I had, but there was a picture in the magazine. Yeah, yeah. And then when and you had get it. And just, you and just, it was, you keep staring at it. Man, it's the, it was it's the object of your desire. Just great. It's probably quite tough for anyone under a certain age to get their head around that in this day and age, actually. The number of artists I've interviewed over the years who tell me they would get on a train and go to London and go to Denmark Street just to peer through the window at the Fenders and Gibsons because they were unavailable. Yeah. You could not get that thing. No. And even if you did, it you, it would be like five months' money for your, for your parents to... To buy That's it, a so really every, big deal. everyone had it on tick, you know, by purchase or whatever it was called. Yeah, it's really hard to imagine that. Whereas these days, you know, most people in work, it's not exactly a week's wages to buy a to buy a Squire strap for a lot yeah. of people, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, and they're great as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, yes, sorry. Buy the guitar that that makes your heart beat, or one that looks like that. Uh, Tony Millie says good point about looks I'm giving my brother a guitar um, he used to play uh, I'm going to work on it with him uh, do a torched wood finish and get his name engraved I want it to look good so he picks it up there you go very cool go uh, easy on the torching yeah I saw a torched guitar yesterday I met, met a guy from Wales I apologise I can't remember your name I saw it too he called this, yeah, yeah. yeah he got it in a, found it in a like a cash converters or something like that right. or a local music shop or something and uh, yeah really inter guessing, inter yeah, interesting yeah. guitar Yeah, I, I have to mention at the guitar show at the weekend Dan and I were at the UK guitar show and um, it was the end of day one I bumped into this two guys from Western Superman and they came up oh you're, you're Mick from that pedal show I'm like oh cool you know what do you do and I was asking this one guy what's your name he says Ayrton I'm like what like like Ayrton Senna, the racing driver. He said, yeah, yeah, like exactly like Ayrton Senna, the racing driver. I said, oh, okay, that's cool. What an interesting name. And uh, anyway, he plays in Hell's Bells. Right. One of the ACDC tribute bands. And uh, I was like, what, what what, guitar you got then? And he's like, oh, SG. I'm like, great. <laughs> and, uh, so, you know, in a, in a sort of modern tribute band, what amps are you playing then? Expecting him to go, oh, you know, it's all really quiet. We've got to do Kemper and Helix now. And he's like, 100 watt plexi. Get on it, and you you made my day. And then the following day, there was a, a lad playing guitar on the ATB guitar stand, like full of really good chops. And apparently, this this oh. this this chap is known. Um, he has an Instagram thing that I've signed up to. I I cannot remember his name, but I'll rectify that later and let everyone know what it is. His name is Senna. His name is Senna. And, and I'm his... like, hang on. Do you know there's an... He says, yeah, we come from the same town. <laughs> oh, man. And they met. So, they met at college. Complete, like, there was no connection. One of them's called Ayrton, one of them's called Senna, and they meet at college in the same town. I think that's... Uh, there's some destiny in there somewhere. Something meaningful needs to happen. Anyway, Senna... Both, I, I hadn't heard Ayrton play, but Senna, he had some really nice... The, the young kid. Yeah, yeah he yeah. had some great shots. So he's got an Instagram channel, and, and I, I have to... I'll find out what it is. Yeah. And I actually post... Uh, on our Instagram, I'll do a little screenshot of his channel because he's, yeah, he's amazing. Yeah, he was good. He was good. Uh, Joe Walsh. Oh, yeah. N nice of you to join us. Um, was that his name? Joe Walsh. Guy in the Eagles? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, says, hey, guys, what happens when you have two amps running two separate tremolo effects at different speeds? L magic. Magic, magic happens. happens. Yeah. Joe, if you haven't watched our first video with harmonic tremolo and Joey Landreth, please watch that. Dan does that exact experiment, and magical things occurred. It's awesome. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Hans Linen, Lien, Linen, Hans Linen says, "Hi there from Belgium. What about using two four-channel amps like JVM 410s? Switch them both on the same MIDI channel." The wet section to one amp, no drive pedals via a 1960 stereo cab. Yeah, we sort of talked about that a bit earlier, Hans. You can totally do that. It's not quite the same as having two separate amps, mm. um, but it is still a very cool, very cool sound. Look at that. I said MIDI. I'm not even sweating. M1D1. Uh, 
Blank says, Mick claims to know nothing about sports, but he knows that in Senna, <laughs> says Blank. Um, Have you seen the documentary, Senna? Yeah. Oh, man. It's really incredible. It's incredible. Yeah. I See, once you get into motorsports, it, I, I start becoming more interested. Right. Four wheels kind of semi-interesting. There was a fantastic tribute to Colin McRae on Top Gear last night. Right. The rally driver. Mm. Uh, wow. What a blooming hero he was. Um and but then when you get onto two wheels, now I'm interested. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um What's your bike? Is it it's not a Bu Bugatti, is it? So Yeah, it's it? a Bugatti Veyron two wheeled <laughs> version. It's a Ducati. What? Ducati. Yeah, I, don't, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a thing. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, let's see. Joe Brennan says, any plans to get a preferred retailer in the US again? I have a local suggestion if you are. Um, we've actually started doing affiliate links with, uh, what are they called? Um, massive, <laughs> gigantic, uh, Sweetwater. Um, the preferred retailer thing is really interesting. Mm. We did it because it helped us get our start and Andertons were very generous to... Um, Support us in the early days of TPS and actually shout out to Lee and the boys. Lee, Lee's a champion. Yeah, uh, Lee, Pete, everyone else at Anderton's. Yeah, just great humans. Really great. And then uh, since we've grown, I think it's, you know, it works for them. <laughs> now I think we we drive decent sales for our Anderton's, so mm. um, it's it's all good. And same with Pedal Empire. Matt is a really good friend of Dan's. I met Matt a bit later, and that was a sort of very human relationship thing in the same way that it was with um uh, Rift City and yeah. Joe there because there was just a personal connection and it was kind of the right thing to do and there was sort of the, all this goodwill going on unfortunately Rift City um went under uh and we haven't felt moved to have another close relationship with the US retailer we thought we would just try a straight affiliate link scheme where if you click on the the link and you buy something we end up getting a bit of a kickback from that which is how one of the ways in which we fund that pedal show alongside um merch and stuff so no we haven't thought about it but at the moment we're seeing how the um sweetwater thing goes and the reason we chose sweetwater is because they are vast and they sell pretty much everything so one of the issues with a preferred retailer is if we've got links in the thing and, and they don't sell it yeah it can be a bit frustrating from your point of view uh, although, of course, you've got Google. You can find it anywhere else. So, yeah, that's sorry. Very long-winded answer. John W. Doyle. Oh, thank you for your... Yes, thank you, John. That's very generous. Um, hi, chaps. Just rewatched the John Smith episode. Did you ever find an octave that tracks chord bass notes better than the OC3? Love the show. No. Yeah, I'm not sure how much it's to do with the OC3. And how much it's to do with the strength of the signal coming from that piezo pickup? Because that was, yeah. So was it the piezo pickup? Was it the one of the neck? That no, the using? piezo dr definitely drives the octave because okay, right. it needs that definition. And so, um, and that strength of signal. We need to talk to John. Actually, he's on tour in Australia at the moment. Oh, is he? Yeah, he, he should. Uh, John Smith. He should come back. He should make us cry. Yeah. Again. So no, John, we don't... Make us feel... We haven't, but that's a really good subject, actually. If you haven't seen the John Smith episode, go and check it out. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> Rydock says, human relationship, that's something only an alien would say. <laughs> <laughs> They're onto us. Yeah, I, we take your point. But um, I would counter that by saying, in this blooming business, in every business, everything's always about money. And it's depressing how about money everything always is. So, so get on that top chat, guys. Yeah, on and the let's, top chat. Let's get go that, to that going. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> when Dan and I talk about human relationships, what we mean is people that you have a connection with, and that's mm. why we play the stuff we play and why we use the stuff we use because humans are important, believe it or not. Sorry to get all serious, but business is really boring after a while, isn't it? Everyone's obsessed with it. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm just at a point in my life where I, I'm not obsessed with it. <laughs> yeah. It's important stuff, but it doesn't have to rule everything. No, you've got to eat. you got to eat. You've got to have a roof over your head. Yep. After that, it's all a bonus. Uh, Sunset 1997 says, do pedals like the TC Mimic and Keeley Doubler cause phase issues by design? As in phase issues internally? 
Well, if you think what the doubler does. So, yeah, so, yeah, right. So, but what the doubler is doing, that, that delay, uh, when you get to those sort of delay times, you're, you're adding something different. It's then. a delay. It's, 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 it's like not the latency. 30 millisecond double tracker yeah. is 30 milliseconds. That's a delay at that point. Yeah. It's not a, you know, each signal is so far out. It's not a, not a phase issue specifically. The TC mimic is interesting. Yes. Because that's what's, what you're doing there is you're mimicking the effect of double tracking a guitar. So what that means is, presumably there's some variability mm -hmm. in what it's doing to the delay sound. If you, it, um, for anyone unaware, lots of rhythm guitars, and if you know this, I apologize, lots of rhythm guitars you hear, especially in rock music, will be doubled. So you'll play it once, and then you play it again, and the tiny differences in the way you play it create this sort of bigger, fatter sound. I was working with a producer in Sydney, a uh, guy called Daniel Denham, very talented producer, arranger. DD, double D -D. Daniel, double, double Denham. Denham. It was great. Mm. And he'd just done a session uh, with Neil Finn. And, he double, and Neil Finn double tracked acoustic guitar. He said that he was so in time, there was no chorusing. What? He, he, he was so on it. There was no chorusing. Of the, he said he couldn't believe it. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you go. So it does, it creates, in unless you're Neil Finn, <laughs> or probably Mark Letiri, or maybe John Petrucci. Um, <clears throat> uh, never met Petrucci. Did you not? Have met uh, Mark Letiri. I probably shook Petrucci's hand. Have you have you honked Neil? And said, yeah, I did honk okay, Neil. Okay, right, yeah, just yeah. making sure. So uh, for most normal humans anyway, um, when you play those two things, there is that variance, and that's what the doubler does. So it's not, to answer your question, it's not a uniform, phasey, latency yes. delay. It is doing that. Yep. There's a modulation there. Like yeah. chorus. Yeah. Same thing. That's my logic answer. It's I don't know if it's right or not, but anyway. Um... Soren let it. You guys rock, and so does Wet Dry. Thank you, Soren. It's very kind. Uh, Phil X rocks. Phil X, man. Phil X rocks. We'll say it again. He's on tour in the UK and maybe Europe, but definitely in the UK this week. Uh, yeah. I'm trying not to make it too loud. Although I think we've got a limiter on. Uh, yeah, Bristol tomorrow night, Phil X. Bristol tomorrow night or Wednesday night? Uh, yeah, Wednesday night. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. What do you guys think of D'Angelico guitars, says JWB, specifically the XLDCs? Thanks. Uh, I haven't played many of the new ones. No. So, uh... I'll say something controversial while Dan thinks. Okay. Uh, all the ones I've played just feel like Ibanez's, Schecter's, because they feel like, you know, um, factory-made, mass-produced, heavily finished electric guitars, mm -hmm. all of which feel kind of similar to me, personally. Backtrack a little bit from that. That was a couple of years ago. Okay. And they were all the kind of low to mid price ones. I haven't played any of the higher end ones, which may well be different. Okay. Was it, I keep getting this confused, but was it the D'Angelico New Yorker? Or was it the D'Aquisto? Uh, D'Angelico. There was a D'Angelico New Yorker. Yeah, is... okay. So John D'Angelico, back in the day, was a boutique, High-end guitar maker. Okay. Yeah. Now I think they that was the one with the like the car fin on the back. Have you seen that one? Oh, I haven't Cre seen that. But the, 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 the headstock is, has the like a New York skyline and it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they were exquisite unbelievable. jazz guitars. I've only ever seen one behind a glass case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not not my area of knowledge at all. But right. they look pretty cool, and I would think you could. Uh, I would imagine they would be comparable um, in pr in price point to whatever they're going up against. I would sure. imagine. Yeah. Matt's I heard Matt Schofield playing a... Oh, yeah, at NAMM. Yeah, like a Here's thin a line ES-type one. Yep. Sounded pretty cool. Yep. But they, um, I don't know where they're made. For anyone who doesn't know, a lot of Far Eastern made guitars, whether it's Korea or China. It's a lot in Indonesia. You know, there are a bunch of factories that make for... A bunch of different brands. Lots of different yeah. brands, and which is not to say they're all the same because they all do their own custom specs and everything, but they do feel kind of similar to me, all those, yep. all those guitars. 
in the same way that all custom shop strats feel kind of similar. Yeah. So it's not. A, I'm not saying similarly it's a bad awesome. Thing. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, Indonesia says Alba's band. Uh, uh, Heiner, two thousand says with two amps, would you play stereo or wet dry? Always wet dry for me. Always wet dry for me. Yeah, stereo is a pain in the butt because it means you've always got to have two amps, and if you don't have two amps. Half of it's not there. Whereas with wet dry, you take the dry amp away, it's all still there. Uh, BV Ninja has posted a link for the Andy Timmons tickets. Thank you, BV. Thank you, BV. Yes. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, we are doing four dates with Andy Timmons. I can barely believe I'm saying those words. <laughs> We're going to have to play guitar on stage with him. I know. You realise that? It is crazy. Don't worry, he'll be playing by himself as well, so you won't have to. There he is. Andy, 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 I Andy? can't let you go. Andy? <laughs> uh, yeah, by some stroke of amazing luck, we're playing Liverpool at the Cavern Club. We're playing um, Asylum 2 in Birmingham. We are playing at Fat Lills at Whitney, which I think is very, very nearly sold out. And we're playing at the Water Rats in London on Easter Sunday, the 12th of April. Mm -hmm which I think is also really nearly sold out. So if you want to go to any of those gigs, please on it. hit that pedalshowstore.com and buy tickets because they are getting thin on the ground at this point. Once they're gone, they're gone, people. Yes. It is quite mad to be saying that. Yeah, no, it's unreal, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That pedalshowstore.com and that pedalshow.com for details in the UK, 8th to 12th of April, which is in a few weeks' time. We did a whole show yesterday in Birmingham where... Yeah, you know, the same city where we're doing a gig with Andy, and we completely forgot to mention it. <laughs> so what we do, we're consistent. How are we looking? Uh, Rip Van Winkle. Nice. Says, regarding the modeler with tube amp example, what devices can delay a signal by a couple of milliseconds? Um, any delay pedal that can go down to a couple of milliseconds. And also do 100% wet. Yeah. Yes. Oh yes, because you've got to get the dry signal out. Got to get the dry out. signal out. Ah, yeah. So that's essential. You've got to get rid of the dry signal, and delay by a couple of milliseconds. Yep. Yeah. I wonder. It would probably be worth. So on some, on some delays, and some modulations, it is possible to configure the outputs to be wet dry. Yes. Chorus pedals. Yep, C1. C... But that's that's analog. Yes. So if it's possible on a digital pedal, you just stick both of them through and then you get the latency on both amps. Maybe. Unless it is truly true bypass through, which it probably won't be if it's 100%. Unless it's got an analog try through, which it won't have, potentially. Oh, it's so thorny. <laughs> And then who's to say that two digital amps have got the same latency? They probably haven't. And how much does it Unless matter? They're, they're does identical one amps. millisecond matter? It does. Yeah, absolutely does. It look, it, so it it does because I, it's where the comb filtering. Happens. I saw the. I saw like it. That? But w at what point can you hear it? And at what point is it a problem? Well, it's the frequencies that you hear it at. Is half a millisecond a problem? Uh, is not point so not one right. millisecond Let's a have problem? A, so one millisecond. Yeah. Right. That is. That is. Uh, that is a delay of one thousandth of a second. Yeah. Right. Uh, a four forty, which is here, goes at four hundred and forty times at 440 per second. Four hundred and forty times per second. Right. So you're looking at the, the the movement of that by a quarter. Yeah. So then, absolutely, and yeah. uh, and I'm here. If I go up to um, eight eighty. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know that. So that, yeah. So if if I, if well, like one millisecond, uh, yeah, is one uh, k, then whatever frequency is five hundred hertz, will be completely out of phase. So, and that's what I'm saying. It is all frequency dependent. So don't do it. <laughs> it's just it's yeah. Don't do it. There go, you go stereo. Or buy an expensive phase conversion thing. You can get plugins. 
It'll do it automatically. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Rydock says you also have to take into account the relativity of time. Uh, that is a very pertinent point at this hour, I would say. <laughs> Matt Kula says hello from China. Hi, Matt. Hope you're safe. Yeah. Uh, oh, Frankie Holt. I've just got the new Timmy, the Dunlop MXR, Dunlop MXR, MXR Dunlop Timmy. Name. Right. Would be good to hear that. Yes. It'd be very interesting It'd to hear that. It'd be very nice to hear that. For anyone who doesn't know, um, Paul Cocker and Timmy is now available, um, a version thereof via Dunlop MXR. Right. It'd be interesting to open one up and it would see be very what they've done. Yes. Because I suspect it doesn't look much like a Timmy, if I'm being honest. Yep. Um, uh, right. Hey guys, love the show, says Nathan Longwell. Any advice for running a dual channel amp with a single master volume with an AB box? Would you set them both up clean? Hang on, it's running a dual channel amplifier with a single AC15. master volume. Okay. Uh, with an AB box. So you're using an AB box to switch between the normal and the... So is this in a wet dry configuration? Um, let's say... Option one, it's not in a wet dry. Oh, okay. So you're just switching between the channels. Yeah. Okay. Set them up how you like them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what you're saying is it's a single master volume, so you can't get the absolute balance of preamp gain and output that you want. Therefore, there's a bit of a compromise to be Because the gain structure is created by the master volume. Yes. I see. I yes. See. Um, any tips for that? Hmm. Uh... Wherever that happens, and if you like getting your gain from your amp, I've always found that cranking the amp and then using your guitar for everything else is pretty much the only way to do it. Unless you want to mess about with boosts in the loops and stuff. So you just go totally old school, set the amp to patent pending, yep. and then your guitar volume does everything else. And that is a very satisfying, very satisfying way to do it, I think. Not always possible, but then that's what the master volume's there for. It's a tough one, that. It is tricky. And it's yet another reason why Dan and I use the kind of amps and pedals we do, because you can control it all from your board. Yeah. <clears throat> it was lovely to... Because I'm so used to hearing our rigs in this room, to hear it yesterday in Birmingham on that big stage in front of all that people, hearing a little bit coming through the PA. I mean, it's a, it's a great thing. It's a really inspiring, moving thing. Yeah. Happy days. Uh, right, we should think about wrapping this up, Dan. Uh, my Secret Machine says, Mick and Dan, I just got the Neo Instruments drive in. Thanks for showing it off. It really sounded amazing. It's great. It's great. Yeah, it's great really pedal. cool. Yeah. A lot of people said, is it just a Timmy copy? It didn't really sound much like a Timmy to me at all. Oh. Yeah, and the controls are all different, so no, don't think so. Yeah. Um, well, the controls are significantly different. Um, right, Tom German. Hello, Tom. Should I sell my TC Hall of Fame and Flashback 2 in favour of the new plethora? I was already worried about tone print software rendering the pedal useless in 10 years. The new pedal is too much software and not enough pedal? Question mark. Do you remember plethora was what Tor showed us about 18 months ago? I do. Oh. It looks, and it's great. Yeah, yeah. It's basically uh, a bunch of tone print pedals all in one, isn't it? Yeah, it, I, it is. Have I got that right? Yeah, I think so. So, the... Uh, the Hall of Fame does have an analog dry through. The I don't think this one does. I could be wrong, but from memory, oh, I do. That have to have because you, you're doing different pedals in that tone print thing. So that have if they were doing it analog, that have to have uh, different analog circuitry going in parallel with all the digital stuff. So I yeah, don't know yeah. if it will be. But it could be awesome. Uh, you know, I don't know. We haven't played one. Not yeah. really. I think the, the tendency with that kind of thing is to look at all the features and go, wow. Yeah. Imagine what I could do with all of that. And then you yeah, end up yeah. using one delay and half a reverb. Yep. So I, th there's a certain amount of reality involved in going, I'm not going to use all of that stuff. Sure. Uh, but maybe that's just me. Um, TJ and JM Brooks, hello. <laughs> we met at the Birmingham Guitar Show yesterday. It was really lovely to meet you, um, and I apologise. I was a bit stressed trying to get my pedal board to work before our uh, before our show. 
Um, honestly, lads, you could have kept going for another hour yesterday. It was fab. Thanks very much for coming out. And yes, we could have kept going. <laughs> yeah, would have been really easy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tom Miley Music. Hi, Tom. Uh, personally, I think people should probably use the guitars, controls more. It's been really freeing for me to just use the guitar and amp for most of my sound. It's a glorious way to play. Just guitar and amp? Yeah. So, mm. and crank the amp and use your volume control. It's a really freeing way to play. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I would say... Most of us like something to lean on as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's it's a really great skill to, under, you know, understanding the dynamics of your amp and how that works and understanding how you, the relationship with the guitar and the amp works. It's great. But then you think, okay, that's really good. If I just boost the front end just a little bit more, get your boost pedal. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Um, there's a lot of mids there. If I could drive and just soften that out, so, okay, great, good boost pedal, drive pedal, that's fine, I'm still, you know, oh, okay, I just, I've had a bit of movement, oh, you know, I've heard that, it's, you know, and then it starts to, yeah, it's quite, yeah. and that's fine, but still, every now and then it's going straight in, turning up, and just getting that relationship between here and this and the amplifier, yeah. and just reminding yourself, okay, because that's what we do with our amps, I mean, yes, they're clean pedal platforms, but we're, we're using the pedals in relation to the gain stages in the amplifier. And that's, yeah. you know, that's yeah, why I it mean, sounds mega. By the time a serious overdrive is hitting the front end of either of our amps, that amp is no longer clean by a long way anymore. No, no, it's no, no, overdriving no. significantly when the, when the pedal starts hitting it. Yeah. But it's not overdriving when just the guitar is hitting it. So it's that grey area of... Is yeah. it fully gained? Is it clean? No, you know. But they're working together. Yeah. It's a it's that relationship that that you you know. And then and then this takes on a whole new meaning. So yeah, totally agree. And then some. Tom King, hi Tom. Thank you for that, Tom. Oh, uh, cheers, great Tom. to see you live on Sunday. Good to know what I hear on YouTube is close to the real thing. Oh, that's good to hear. Thanks for chatting, Mick, uh, from the guy in the meat loaf and share show. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. I've met quite a few people over the weekend, actually, who do shows, do, like, really cool shows. Have you... So, if you could be in any show, like, tribute show thing, what oh, would it be? Oh, God, that's really hard. That's really tough. Well, obviously, a Hendrix one, but okay. I don't think one exists. You kidding? A tribute show. Is yeah. there one that exists, like it's... a Broadway show? No, 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 just, just to... Okay, oh, so just like a tribute band. As oh, I it, as see. It was, as it was. Oh, I see a tribute band. You know, but it's you know, it can be a show. You can you know whatever. But if you were to go out and do a show like a tribute. Oh yeah, thing, no. Tom's talking about show, like like a theatre show. Yeah, yeah. But it's a meat, meatloaf and share show. I mean, you can you know, you yeah. Can, you can go out to the. I've seen meatloaf and share at the dog and duck. Yeah. Uh, okay. No, so obviously not a good one. If you're in any kind of but tribute, that, band. I'm sure these guys are awesome. That's really hard. Um, I uh, go on. have wanted to play guitar in a Billy Joel tribute band for the longest time. Well, I didn't see that coming. Yep, because I love the guitar parts in his songs. No way. Yeah, I absolutely love it. Yeah. Um, that I, I've always wanted to do that. Wow. I need to listen to more Billy Joel. So I, I think I'd like amazing, to play drums Amazing, amazing guitar parts in his... And <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay, let's take one more because um, we need to go and eat food. Ah, uh... oh. Gerard, Gerard, Thomas, how do you spell it? Garant. Yeah. Is it Welsh? Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, thank you, Garant. That's very kind. Appreciate that. Simon Mastromateo. Simon, yeah, Mastromateo. We've we've spoken to you before. Bad Cat Amps, you guys should really check it out. Uh, Anderton's is now retailing them. Oh, wow. Comparison with the Matchless. Uh, uh, you probably know the history of Bad Cat Amps. Bad Cat's cu currently under new ownership okay. again. Um, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if that's the right question. Um, I've played my fair share of Hot Cats. Fantastic things. Hot Cat my 30. favourite awesome. Bad Cat was the BC50 that Grissom used for a little while. Wow. It's like a 50 watt. But nice. Yeah, yeah it's Stephen always, Wilson's 100 watt bag cat always sounded great. It's, um, it's tough when somebody establishes something as a as a central market thing, and then somebody else 
does that. Yeah. I I don't know. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, but I, that exists for a reason. Because so, they invented it. Yeah. So that I... Uh, inside Dave Gregory's HC30, which has been using since the mid-90s, is Phil Jamison's signature. And Phil made that app. Yeah. You know, and there's... So I love that. I love that that story and the consistency and the they've always, you know, and so that's been my dream app. So, um, but there is, of course, there are, you know, similarities. The the the, the bad cats for me do the heavier thing really well. I, yeah. I've I've heard them in that context. Yeah, they're great. App. They're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please don't take my comments as no, 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 anything no. other than than them being fantastic amps. Yeah. They are fantastically yeah. made, really great amps. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, but yeah, be cool. Be cool to try some out. Uh, I did see one final question here. La, 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 la. Now I've lost it. Now I've lost it. One, 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 one. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, I've lost it. So we'll go. Final question then from Dutoro of the Bull. Uh, what other device besides the Humdinger could I use for a wet dry rig? It's not easy to find a Humdinger in Brazil. So what you need is a device that splits the signal and one side gives you an isolated phase reversible signal. So if you, this is, this is interesting. When we were filming, uh, we did a show with Josh S Scott. Scott. Sorry, I was right in the middle of a burp then I was trying not to be rude. So in the middle of, a, it, it, in the middle of filming with Josh Scott, we needed a, a splitter. And I ran into every guitar store on Denmark, on Denmark Street. Street. Couldn't find one. Well, the only ones they had were like passive AB huh. things. Not a single. So no isolation. No, no isolation. Phase no phase reverse. reversible. Um, so radial, do a good one. Uh, Lale. Yeah, Layla, do a Layla, good Layla, one. Do a good one. Um, there's a there's a there's a bunch of people that that do them. The full tone true ABY is very good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So th those. They're great. It's basically an A B Y switch, where that has a phase reverse and an isolated out. Yep. That's what you need. Yep. And that'll do it. Yep. What did you say, Layla? Layla? La, la, Layla? Layla? La, la, yeah, la, yeah. German company. Layla. Radial. <laughs> <laughs> Got me on my knees, Layla. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, yeah, radial. Uh, Lale, Layla, Full Tone, mm -hmm. and there probably are others, but yeah. those are the three that I know of that are really good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Let's Very leave it good. there, Daniel. Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching and contributing. Uh, really appreciate that. Thanks for everyone that uh, did the top chat. That's awesome. Uh, don't forget to head to thatpedalshowstore.com and check out the merch and teas and cups and things and also the tickets for the, the Andy Timmons gig uh, in Liverpool, in Birmingham, uh, in Whitney and in London in April. need to April. attach the pole somewhere less alarming. <laughs> yes, uh, 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 that metal show band featuring extremely special guest Andy Timmons, 8th to the 12th of April in a few weeks' time. ThatPedalShowStore.com, ThatPedalShow.com. Yeah, if you haven't seen Andy live and you have the opportunity to, to do it, do it. He's the most extraordinary guitar player. Actually, fundamentally changed the way I think about guitar, going to see him play. He's extraordinary. Oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah, a wonderful thing. Yeah. Okay, uh, there'll be a video on Friday to do with classic effects combinations. Ah, nice. There'll be a vlog for me either... Probably Wednesday. Now I've got a new computer today and I've been setting it up. You've not been over overwhelmed with joy. I didn't want to buy it in the first place. I bought a new Mac laptop and I just did not want to buy it. But I had to buy it because it's the only option. It's annoying. Anyway, I'm setting it up and hopefully I will be able to edit a video on it tomorrow to go out on Wednesday. Great. I'm blissfully happy about my amplifiers and my pedal board. I hate <laughs> the Apple Macintosh. There we are. Nice. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Uh, have a great day. Have a great week, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.